How you going, you big bloody beautiful bastards? Here's me face. The day has come to reflect upon the year that was 2020. Now, I know many of you don't want to talk about it. I don't want to bloody talk about it, but I got a job to do, and this is my job. So let's soldier on. Let's stay positive, and let's get stuck into this. I personally knew it was gonna be a strange year when Conor McGregor started acting polite. Why isn't he yelling insults in Cowboy's face? Then he shakes hands, what the fuck? Smiling, mini bow, another handshake. I just knew, I knew this year was gonna be a little bit skew if from the very beginning. No matter how hard we all tried to make this year look glossy and glamorous and sunshiny, it couldn't be done. There's no escaping this pooey, speeding dog boat of a year. No, no shit, I need to stay positive. Lots of cool things happened. Lots of positive, cool, uplifting things. Like this legend creating a living room in the sky. It looks pretty comfy. I mean, it's hard to have guests. I don't think he cares though. He's got his Doritos, his Coke, his grandpa's slippers. Oh, here comes gravity. It's gonna end in a tragedy. Shit, look away now. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, nah, maybe, maybe, yeah. Nah, he's good. Everyone's like, awesome housemate, how much are your mortgage repayments? Oh, not much, it's only a holiday home. Dave O'Blaine also built a holiday home in the sky. I don't think his is built to last as long, especially if a fucking helicopter flies by or a dodgy ass pelican. Here's a cat with Disney eyes. Here's a mountain goat that's unnaturally massive. This is a story I want to know more about. Where are they coming from? How many of them are there? And who is feeding them steroids? Because everyone's lost their job this year, they've shifted their focus into being influencers. This Sheila is like, can you help me get followers? Sure, sure, says the bear. How about I rip your bloody fucking head off? That should generate lots of comment engagement, yeah? Nathan Apodaca did pull it off. He fully became an influencer out of nowhere. All it took was some delicious juice, mild weather, a smooth downhill road, and oh yeah, no nah, yeah, knowing the lyrics to Fleetwood Mac off by heart. Keep it simple, people. You know, keep it simple. I reckon Dr. Phil looks like he snuck vodka into his juice. He's cruising round, about to get jumped by Bad Barbie. Oh, the trend has gone full circle. Mick Fleetwood was like, people are doing what on the TikTok? All right, no worries. I can buy a skateboard and get a big juice from the servo. Fuck yes. Like most years, weird trends that make very little sense caught on in the world. Sheila's walking out naked in front of their boyfriends became a thing. Wait a sec, is he abandoning his beer? He is. The dogs are like, what's wrong with him? Boyfriend attack. Eventually blokes were like, oh, we want to do it too. That's how you know when a trend is over, once there's too many dicks involved. <laughs> Chris Evans inadvertently did the trend to all of Instagram. It was a tough year for actors, they got bored. Captain America whacked his wang on the web and Wonder Woman butchered John Lennon's Imagine. I didn't see this trend work out well for anyone throughout the whole year. It mostly ended in pain. It was a huge year for the video conference app Zoom. Lots of wankers used it. Women discovered how annoying their partners are trying to gate crash their meetings. There's a Rubik's Cube. Baby Yoda could be handy in a meeting. He adds a lot of wisdom to the agenda. A plant for the home office? That's helpful. This bloke is helping. He's bringing life to a sterile corporate environment. This one is outright fair dinkum practical. Hand Sani is a primo product. You don't say no when someone offers to share it anymore. You never say no. It's worth a lot. No, nah, it is. Toilet paper. You never say no when someone offers to share that either. Bog roll became one of the most sought after products of the year. If you've hoarded too much of it, then this supermarket manager has a bloody message for you. And I had my first customer yesterday who said he wanted to get a refund on 150 packets of 32 pack toilet paper. I told him that. But enough talking about shit rag. What I found the most interesting during the coronavirus pandemic was the way different governments have dealt with this issue. Because when you think about it, it's one of the first times ever that we've seen politicians do work. Like, they rarely have to do work, and that's fucking fascinating. I'll be able to say to my son, I, I lived through an era, well, almost, I don't know, we're not out of it yet, but I'll be able to say, I saw politicians do work. Some of them for a few weeks, and they gave up, others for a bigger 
chunk of time, like 12 months. But that's funny. And the way they've had to communicate with us on a near daily basis has led to a lot of awkward moments. Like in Holland, where the Dutch Prime Minister was like, yeah, now nah, we're not shaking hands anymore. Well done, mate. Let's shake hands. Great job. Oh, shit. Shit. Come back again. Uh, uh, elbow tap. That's where it's at. Let's do that. Now he gives him a neck hug and brings him in real close. Real close. In Italy, the politicians got so mad, they yelled at people from their office desks. They yelled at people on the beach. They yelled back in the office, we're gonna go get flamethrowers. The Filipino president was like, finally, I've got a good opportunity to shoot you all. Sri Lankan politicians were caring. Look at that, he's giving a citizen the mask off his face. Yeah, I'll stop you there. That is caring, but, um, unhigh fucking genic The British government unleashed Daleks on citizens. That cleared the fucking streets. I guess Boris thought many English people respect Doctor Who more than him. Okay, that was heartwarming of Boris to give credit to the doctors and nurses who saved his life. He could have acted like a dickhead and given himself all the credit, but he didn't. Seeing politicians suddenly act humane is as weird as seeing them do work. Our Prime Minister got in fights with the media. He's seen one of his mates do it a lot, so he thinks it's cool. Catherine hasn't had a question. I'm happy to return to you, but let's just okay, keep it right. civil. Catherine. He is definitely thinking Trumpy's gonna be so proud of me. Unfortunately, bickering doesn't stop a virus spreading. Canada's PM tried real hard to explain face masks simply. Because it prevents you from breathing or, or, or speaking uh, moistly on them. Oh, what a terrible image. I love that he instantly knows he said something gross. Look, I get it, it's hard to follow rules. To be fair to the politicians, it's hard to tell people to follow rules. Because we love talking moistly at each other. Majority of people on the planet enjoy talking moistly at each other. It's one of the human race's favourite activities. And you know, in Perth, Australia, we've not been pushed much with rules. We're lucky that our isolation down here is a natural advantage in a pandemic. If our state government <laughs> fucked up that natural advantage, it would have been embarrassing. It would have been like getting a speed start in Mario Kart and then finishing eighth. You just, yeah, it's not the end of the world, but it's slightly embarrassing. So yeah, the most we had to deal with was our government uh, trying to clarify if people could go for a run and eat a kebab. I don't think there's anything wrong. <laughs> we're, not, we're not making it unlawful to <laughs> go for a run and eat a kebab. <laughs> Uh, it's whether you're, whether you're not a, you're in a group. We never heard much from Taiwanese politicians. They knew what was going on early. They knew how to respond without bitching and whining. I might have a crush on Jacinda Ardern. There, I said it. No take backs. Her Facebook live streams were the most chilled out way to talk to the public ever. If you haven't wanted to listen to politicians throughout the pandemic, that's fine. I understand. But you need to always make sure you listen to Persian parents. Yeah, this is not a joke because if me and your mom catch it, we are all fucked big time. All their people will die. So me and your mom will die and you two be fucked as well. When it comes to health, you listen to Iranian parents. Overall, we can all agree and be really glad that Tom Hanks didn't die. Because that was bloody touch and go. And it could have happened on Australian soil. I wouldn't have forgiven myself or the whole country. Bugger me. Let's all hope this vaccine is ridgy didge and we can put this shit behind us. Well, there's no point in dying now when I haven't lived this long, is there? I don't plan to anyway. What else happened in 2020? an obscure world news story. Look at this inflatable unicorn stuck out at sea. It's such a bummer. It probably belongs to a little girl. Now she can't use it in the pool. Hang on. Why is there movement there? Oh, the little girl is on the unicorn still. Okay. 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 I have questions. Should they be rescuing her? It seems like a trap. It's like the start of a creepy horror movie. Yeah, nah, mate, can I have my dog back, please? He's my best friend. You've got plenty of golf balls in this pond you can eat. Come on, let him go. Nah, I'm hungry. Yeah, fuck.
Fuck yes, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go take a shit. Let my fingers go too. Come on, give them back. I can't tell if this legend Jim is friends with these raccoons or they're holding him hostage. There's potentially a raccoon apocalypse sneaking up on us. In the last week of this year, this bloke is our only chance to keep them at bay. I hope he doesn't run out of fucking Frankfurt's anytime soon. Greedy little furry trash panda wankers. Sort it out, Canada. Give Jimbo a hand up there and stay on top of it. Transparent public toilets in Japan. I'm open to it. I don't think it's as nasty and gross as you think it would be at first. This poor bastard was trying to work on his summer tan when a crane driver blocked the sun. Oh, look out, he's relocating. I like it, crane driver pranks. That could be a fresh new channel. Slowly but surely, he's gonna block the sun again. I always thought people working in construction were busy from like 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. No time to piss fart around. Clearly I've had a one-dimensional viewpoint on the industry. Nandy, in the last week, I've gotten at least 100 texts from people all over the world saying, this girl is challenging you to a drum off. It's super duper fair dinkum comforting that Dave Grohl just kept doing good bloke Dave Grohl type things throughout the year. His drum off with this young Sheila Nandy was wholesome AF. I feel like I reward him with Legend of the Year, like, every year. It's hard not to, though. He's a worthy recipient over and over and over again. What about YouTube? What was big in the world of YouTube? News and gossip. I mean, even YouTube itself couldn't be asked this year. They were like, nah, there's no YouTube rewind. Sort yourselves out. We can't be asked. Is Shane Dawson cancelled? Is that a thing that happened? Tatty bloody cancelled Jimbo Charles last year. Now she's reneging on his cancellation and cancelling Shano. I can't keep up. The beauty genre on YouTube is fucking intense. Boxing? Some YouTubers still went on with the boxing thing. Like Jake Paul is out there KOing. He's KOing people now, which is, that's hard as fuck. That is tough stuff. I guess it adds up. Out of all the YouTubers doing it, he's, he's like the one that could take the most hits and it wouldn't, you wouldn't notice that it's affected him. Oh, I gotta get KO'd. Belle Delphine was like, hey everyone, hi, I'm back. And then all the platforms were like, well, we'll decide if you're back or not. I do find it odd. Like, wet ass P-U-S-S-Y, not an issue on the YouTube. No age restriction, clearly monetized. I got my little, there's my little screenshot. Clearly monetized. It's like YouTube's like, oh, you want some Maccas? You want some McDonald's before you wet ass P-U-S-S-Y? It's not an issue. Belle Delphine's music video, shut down. Aussie Man Reviews flirting, shut down. Aussie Man Reviews trampolines, shut down. Age gated, demonetized. I don't get the point of YouTube having community guidelines if you got preferential publishers. Anyway, anyway, I won't do it. I'm not sitting here bitching about work. Okay, it's been good. It's been a fun year. I've had a great year, sincerely. And there's so many great, Great content creators to watch out there on the web. I've bloody loved having a binge watch of Brody's channel over on the bloody, what's it called, YBS Youngbloods. He goes on so many adventures. He's on like an adventure a day. It's fantastic. Matt Wright, the Outback Wrangler, is a hoot over on the Instagram. Here he is with a crocodile, all like, yeah, no, 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 mate. Now nah, get back. Go on. We got work to do. We got a job to do here. We don't need you hanging around being all fucking predatory in the area, trying to eat our legs. No, 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 back you go. Uncle Roger, we know and love. You know I love him. Check out the collab I did with him over on his channel or my channel. I also did a collab with Neebs Gaming this year, and I'm a proper fanboy of those fellas. Dorelius and Associates is one of my favorite web series ever. That is funny AF. Oh yeah, and I made a video with me mate Craig trying out his dodgy pogo stilt crutches invention. I think he was trying to break my ankles, but give that a watch. The links are in the post description. I feel like I'm in an MMA match <laughs> where I'm just like hugging the opponent and I'm on the ground. It's like Habib Nurmagomedov is on top of me. It looks like that. Yeah, I'm just yep. trying to survive. <laughs> Oh. My bushfire fundraiser live show was a lot of fun back in February. You can watch that entire show on me channel. We did a good thing, people of Perth. We did a good, good bloody thing. It was lots of fun seeing you legends face to face too. Maybe I can do more live shows in future in other places. Maybe. Yeah, no, soon, soon, soon. Post Malone doing that Nirvana live stream was sensational. Talk about absolutely nailing it. One of the most wholesome 
channels on the platform on YouTube in particular this year, I think, was Dad, How Do I? It's just basic manly information. How to shave, how to tie a tie. It's lovely. I like watching Jim Browning bloody unveiling scammers and messing with them. That's been a hoot. Auntie Donna is the definition of a hoot. Congrats to them on their big old house of fun over on the Netflix and for making all your all your monoliths. Yeah, look, it's not been a big year for superhero movies, but that's not that's not too much of a terrible thing. The entertainment in 2020 has still been really good. Fuck yes, Borat 2. Fuck yes. I like how Sasha Baron Cohen just came out of nowhere with that. He's like, I'm gonna publish my movie next week. Anyone want it? I reckon he was one step away from just putting it on YouTube. But he would have been shut down. He would have been age restricted and demonetized. Anyway, yeah, nah, look. Big year still for all kinds of entertainment. Let's get back to more random videos. Speaking of WAP a minute ago, one of my favorite renditions on the internet has got to be Jack Black's Wowee, bam, bam, bam. It's like watching the real thing with Cardi B and the stallion, Sheila. Racing cars are fun. Oh shit, that's not fun. That's a sizable fire. I guess this wins greatest destination fucked moment of the year. Romaine is like, yeah, nah, retirement day. Thanks everyone, good night and good luck. Oh dear, someone gave this Scottish Sheila a drop there. One of the most vicious animals in the outback. Don't look at it the wrong way or it will rip your fucking head off. Absolutely bloodthirsty this little bastard is. It can smell fear. Nah, she's panicking. She's in trouble. Someone take it off her. You were kidding me! You were kidding me! Okay, maybe it was a regular koala. Nonetheless, protective gear is good. You don't want it to pee on you and you end up with chlamydia. This is a feel-good story. These legends built a fort out in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. Other people started using the fort and leaving letters in a treasure chest. Actually, tons of people ended up using the secret fort. I hope someone comes along with the skills to put in an aircon, maybe a shower, an OLED TV, a driveway, a garage. Shit, no, I'm wrecking it. It needs to remain tranquil and serene. I'd be the wanker that finds it and changes it too much, hey. Eh? I'd bloody break it and wreck it. This is a very unique way to escape all the trouble in the world. Put your head down, get in the zone, and focus on your skipping. He is flying towards 2021. Whereas this toddler is more like me. I am stumbling into 2021. Exhausted, screaming, wanting all the gunfire to stop. Oh, look out! He's hit a dead end. There's no mercy coming from his dad. I suppose getting obliterated with a nerf gun is a valuable life lesson. Overall, yeah, nah, yeah, it's undeniable that it's been a year filled to the brim with shitfuckery. I hope you've had someone by your side, though. Friends, family, loved ones, whoever, to just give you a little peck and help you keep moving. This crow and his hedgehog mate are a good example of working together in 2020. Come on, hands off cocks on with socks, says the crow. Up the curb you go. In your own time, I'll be patient, but I also won't leave you behind. Come on, buddy, dance, yes. Dancing is a good way to soldier on and be happy. Woohoo! <laughs> ah, fuck me upside down. How did we get here? Earth has lost its ability to party mindlessly. No, she can do it. Focus on your moves. That's it. Do the little fists. The double pump action. Yeah. Go on. That's it. Yep. Okay. She'll be okay. All right. Well, yeah, that brings us to the end of this massive video. It was pretty chock-a-block with classic moments from 2020. I'm sure I missed quite a few, so you can talk about them in the comments below. You don't need to yell at me. You don't need to be like, Ozzy man, you didn't include this. You must not care. Don't you care? I care about tons of stuff, but yeah, not everything. I mean, you know, every human has their limits. But um, remember to like this video, whack that like button, okay? Please do it, it helps a lot on the channel. And uh, comment, share, subscribe, hit that bell. I've never told anyone to do the bell. You subscribe and you hit the bell, and then you get notified. I'm not good at this stuff. Go to aussiemanshop.com. This is the DF Destination Fact 2020 design. That's a fun one. And yeah, just keep being legends in general. I hope I've been able to provide you with a bit of a laugh this year. My whole objective was just to keep it simple, keep it consistent. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed the content. Thanks very much for watching. I do sincerely appreciate it, even though I act like I don't love you because it just feels fraudulent. I don't know you, so I can't love you. It's just weird when social media 
stars are like, I love you. It's like, you don't know that. Anyway, I do appreciate you. So that means something. And um, yeah, happy new year. Merry Christmas. See you in 2021. Easy peasy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piss off. Sweating my balls off. See ya.